الله أكبر الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين آمين إذا وقعت الواكعة ليس لوقعتها كاذبة خافضة رافعة إذا رجت الأرض رجا وبست الجبال بسا فكانت هباء منبثا وكنتم أزواجا ثلاثة فأصحاب الميمنة ما أصحاب الميمنة وأصحاب المشأمة ما أصحاب المشأمة والسابقون السابقون Welcome to Allah's house This is going to be a small series on the Quran and the Muslim religion and I hope that it's a nice learning place for everyone to learn something new and that sparks the discussion between all the faiths that of the people that come here most people say what is islam islam did not start with the prophet muhammad in the seventh century Technically, Islam is the message that was delivered by all the prophets of God, from Adam to Muhammad. Though each prophet had a rel relatively different law, the essence of the message of Islam was always the same. Have faith in one God and do good. In the urge, believers began to avoid what it was wrong So in essence, each, prob each prophet relatively saw the law differently. And so the essence of the message still remained the same. The Bible, the first of the four Ten Commandments, enjoined the worship of God, the, their followers, including Jesus and his disciples, are simply called Muslims in the Quran. Hence, anyone who believes in God to submit to God and strives to be a good person can be called a Muslim with a small m from the ling lingu linguistic perspective. Every human that's being born has the innate will to submit to God, but parents and society change this nature that is born within every child. In order to relate to the Almighty, many have put a face on God, mostly human or an animal throughout history. Islam is not only a religion, but a comprehensive way of life. So who is a Muslim? What does a Muslim look like? Well, 
a Muslim with the capital M is someone who practices Islam. Muslims follow the five pillars of Islam. That would be number one, the Shahada, that is testifying to only one God, and Muhammad is his last prophet. Salah is praying five times a day. Swam is fasting from dawn to sunset during the month of Ramadan. Zakra is alms praying, like paying a tithe. And we do that for an entire year, not just one day. Or like Christians do every Sunday, we do this throughout the year. And Hajj is the final thing, performing pilgrimage to Mecca, if physically and financially able to do so. Muslims also have six articles of faith, and those articles are to Almighty God, His angels, His prophets, His scripture, free choice, fate, and destiny, and the day of judgment. Contrary to common belief, not all Muslims are Arabs, and not all Arabs are Muslims. A lot of people ask, why do Muslims call God Allah? Arabs, Muslims, Christians, and Jews call God Allah. The word Allah is unique in the sense that it has no plural nor gender. It literally means in Arabic, the one true God. Allah has many attributes and beautiful names, such as the most compassionate, the most merciful, the all living, the judge, the creator, and the provider. In his native tongue of Aramaic, Jesus used Allah to refer to God. Moses used other things, Eloha in Hebrew, Allah, Allah, and Eloha come from three Semitic languages in Arabic, Aramaic, and Hebrew, respectively. The proper name, Allah, can be translated to God. Even though this is an imperfect translation, it leaves readers unfamiliar with Arabic with a better understanding and connection to the translation. As Christians have the Bible in many forms to relate to their religion, we have a book called the Quran. So what is the Quran? The Quran is the holy book of Islam. There is only one version of the Quran, perfectly preserved and written from oral records around the world for nearly 1,400 years. The Quran is the only book in history that has been memorized verbatim by millions of people. The chapters were written down separately during the life of the prophet and were collected into one volume within two years of his death. Exact copies were later duplicated from the original collection. Today, all copies of the Quran are perfect duplicates of the first. The Quran emphasizes universal ethics such as honesty, sincerity, generosity, mercy, and standing up for what is right. It aims at humanizing human, hum, humanity and defying God, and therefore continue to condemn those who are persifying God and idolizing their created beings. So people ask all the time, was the Quran copied from the Bible? So it's worth mentioning that the first Arabic, Arabic 
translation from Aramaic, the body was done centuries after the prophet's death. Now, try to understand that, that the first Bible was copied in Aramaic after the Quran and many years, centuries after the Prophet's death. So from an Islamic point of view, similarities between the Quran and the Bible, especially the historic stories such as Joseph, Moses, and Jesus stem from the fact that both scriptures came originally from the same source divine revelation <clears throat> excuse me so a lot of people also ask is islam comparable with science although quran is a book of signs not a book of science there are scientific references in the quran such as the formation and development phases of the embryo in the uterus the Big Bang Theory, and the expansion of the universe. This might seem a little overwhelming at times, um, but it's really not. This is just a clear understanding of what er Muslims think over, you know, Overall, this is what we believe, um, and this is what we're, we're taught. Um, it's hard to explain everything, but this is just, I mean, we can go deeper into the canon of medicine from, you know, into that. But I'm not really trying to go that deep. I'm just trying to give you um, a, a basis. So let's talk about the one thing that people really go hoopla over, and that would be Shara Law. Linguistically, Shara means a pathway. Technically, it is the Muslim law mainly from the Quran teachings of the Prophet Muhammad governing every aspect of the Muslim's life. Shira is made up of a thousand teachings and rulings covering theology, acts of worship, manners, human interaction, business transactions, family, relations with marriage, divorce, divorce inheritance, war, and peace, and the unseen God and unseen angels and thereafter and criminal law. It is not a law that is strictly um, about women. Um, it aims at protecting five things, really. Life, honor, freedom to practice one's faith, intellect, and property. Um and there are punishments in Islamic law for violating any of these. But try to remember that every country has punishments for offenses, even though the penalty for the same crime may vary from one country to another. To say that Sharia law is all about chopping people's hands off is like saying that the American law is all about killing people with the electric chair. So um, they're just not the same. And we can always look at the horror of it without understanding. Um, Shura does not apply to non-Muslim mi minorities who live in a Muslim country. Of the 57 Muslim countries in the world, the great majority are secular and not Shira based. So then you're probably wondering, well, is Islam comparable with modern democracy? Well, we have to make a distinction between Islam 
and how countries in the Muslim world are run. What Islam values unique is that it does not change over time. What is, the, what is right in the sight of God is always right. And what is wrong in the eyes of God is always wrong. On the other hand, many secular freedoms which mm, have been mostly adopted in the last few decades, are still subject to debate. For example, the segregations of black and whites under the Jim Crow laws would be prohibited under Shura law since discrimination based on color goes against Islamic beliefs. Do we all follow this law? That just depends on how strong Shura law is being taken versus real law of the Quran. It, it, when you start mixing Shura law and... Because there's Shura and Shalah. And, and it's almost like there's two versions of it, yet we all follow the same Quran. So, life is sacred in, in Islam. The Quran 5.32 states, Whoever takes a life, it will be as if he had killed all of humanity. And whoever saves a life, it will be as if he saved all of humanity. So, people talk about jihads. And that's usually where you hear the stronger sect in Muslim, just like you have stronger sex, not sex, God, sex, S-E-C-S. Um, in other religions, you have an extreme side and not so extreme. So, jihad means to survive strive for a better, more right, righteous life. Um, we have to keep in mind that all violent passages in the Quran, including verses in chapters 2, 8, 9, 47, and 48, are strictly concerned the conflicts between the early Muslims and pagans of the Mecca over 1400 years ago. Like fighting over all the violent passages in the Quran talk about one or three things. Fighting back in self-defense, making peace if attacks cease, or resuming the fight if a truce is violated. Um, no religion condones the killing of innocents, but some people ma manipulate um, religion to justify violence. So I'm sure you're wondering by now, um, are the women in Islam abused? The Quran makes it clear for men and women are equal before God and the law uh, 1697 and 3335 abuses against some some Muslim women honor killings and forced marriages are cultural practices in some some Muslim countries that contradict Islamic teachings and then there's the next question that I'm sure everybody's been waiting to get to. Why do women wear hijab? The veil is deeply rooted in the Abrahamic traditions. Christian icons such as Mary and Mother Teresa are always depicted with veils. In Quran, and the teachings of the prophet, both men and women are urged to be modest in their dress and behavior. Hijab is worn by adult Muslim women in the presence of adult males and outside their immediate family. And I want to make sure on uh, that people know this. 
no Muslim male makes a Muslim female wear a hijab. That is a choice that they make for themselves. They decide if they decide to wear the hijab, that is a way that they say they are submitting to God. Just like the males wear, like I wear the little uh, kufa, which is a, a, a cotton hat on my head. That is a, a males wear those, and that is signifying their submission to Allah. And the veils are women deciding to submit to Allah. It's the same thing, just two different males wear one headgear, the women wear the other. But I want to make sure everybody knows they are not forced to wear that. They never ask permission. That is something that they do completely 100% on their own. Um. Islam, um, well, my next uh, question part was, what are the rights or non-right non-Muslims in Islam? Well, Islam guarantees the freedom of non-Muslims to practice their faith and to protect and to protect their places of worship. The prophet says, whoever harms a non-Muslim under the protection of Islam, well, I shall be their opponent on Judgment Day. Types of brotherhood, and you will even not. Let me let me rephrase this a different way. Whoever harms a non-Muslim under the protection of Allah, I shall be their opponent on Judgment Day, and they will not even smell paradise. The Quran teaches us that there are three types of brotherhood. Brotherhood in humanity, which includes all human beings. Biological brotherhood, that's one of your siblings. And biological, and not biological, but the last one is brotherhood in faith. So every Muslim um, anywhere in the world is my brother. And I am dedicated to help my brother in any way that I can, wherever I am, at any time, day and night. I could be in another country, but that's my brother. Um, do Muslims believe in uh, other prophets? Well, yeah, we do. We The Quran mentions 25 prophets by name. Abraham, Noah, Moses, Jesus, the Quran says in their stories, there's truly a lesson for people of reason. So I won't go into the whole list. Um, I'll just go through the basics that like Mary is mentioned 31 times and 18 different, 31 times in the Quran and 18 times in the Bible. So, I mean, it's about how many times. Um, they also believe, we also believe in the virgin birth and the second coming. Um, and what are the rights of non-Muslims? Well, we forbid non but it forbids non-Muslims of forcing non-Muslims to convert. And that's kind of funny because someone asked me before we um, even started talking about I was going to make these about me forcing someone to become one. I cannot force someone to become a Muslim. That is against my religion. Um, so this is just a basic, you know, outlook on just a few things to cover up uh, up to this point so far. We believe in animal rights, on the treatment of others. Uh, it's really kind of simple because your Lord is one and your ancestry. So no Arab is superior to a non-Arab and no non-Arab 
is superior to an Arab. Uh, so we don't have race issues. Um, I guess this is most vital to me is on the best way of life. The prophet set out a way of life through his own life, but he also had the following to say on living a fulfilling life. The true Muslim is one who does not harm people with his hand or his tongue. Seeking knowledge is an obligation on every Muslim. Do not respond to evil by evil, but doing what is good. We're to show mercy to those on earth, and God will show mercy to us. Um, this is the most powerful way that I can think of to summarize everything to, on, in a way to end this uh, video. Take advantage of five matters before the coming of five matters. Your health before you fall asleep. Your wealth before you become poor. Your free time before you're, you become busy. Your youth before you become old. And your life before your death. Be mindful of God and he will always be with you. Remember God in the times of prosperity and he will remember you in times of adversity and know that whatever has passed by you and you have failed to attain not was not going to befall on you and what has befallen you was not going to pass you by. And know that victory comes with perseverance, relief with affliction, and ease with hardship. I hope you, I hope I cleared up a lot of things for you. And this is just the basic uh, covering of the many things that a lot of people have questions on. Um, and hopefully we can have a discussion on this at, if you have any questions, you know, when I'm live, just ask me the questions and we can talk about it. So. <laughs> فروح وريحان وجنة نعيم وأما إن كان من أصحاب اليمين فسلام لك من أصحاب اليمين وأما إن كان من المكذبين الضالين فنزل من حميم وتصلية جحيم إن هذا له حق اليقين فسبح باسم ربك العظيم الله أكبر